Hi, today I want to talk about the ESP32 and the use of a Hall Effect sensor or especially a Hall Effect switch and the difference between a Hall Effect sensor and a Hall Effect switch is that with a Hall Effect sensor you can measure the magnetic field and with a Hall Effect switch you can measure the change of the magnetic field and switch in maybe GPIO pin of your microcontroller and there's also a type named Hall Effect Latch and this latch stays in the position even if you remove the magnetic field. And there are also two types, a unipolar Hall Effect switch that can only measure one magnetic field type, maybe a south pole or the north pole. And there are also a omnipolar Hall effect switch that can measure both the north and the south pole. And the Hall effect sensor is very easy to wire up. We only use the power supply connection VCC and the ground. And then we have an output that we can tie to a GPIO pin and can measure if the GPIO pin is high or low. And we can have a look into the data sheet of my Hall Effect sensor. And I use a very old discontinued product. And we can also see that's not rated for the operation voltage that I use. But for me, it also works down to 3.3 volts. So we can have a look into the functional block diagram. We have our Hall Effect sensor and measure the, the voltage difference on the sides of maybe a metal plate and then it goes through a differential amplifier and then it's switched via a Schmidt trigger and the Schmidt trigger triggers an open collector output in this case or maybe an n-channel MOSFET that's tied to ground and so we have an open output and can switch whatever we like. For displaying a status of the Hall effect switch I also use use an OLED display and the OLED display is wired up via I square C bus and as you see I connect the SDA and also the SCL line to the display and the display have an pull up resistor so we don't need to pull up the I square C bus and for debugging I also connect an USB to UART bridge in my case I use the CPU 2104. Here's my bench setup. I tied the output of the Hall effect switch to GPIO pin 13. And as you see on the GPIO pin, I also tie up a resistor, a current limiting resistor and an LED. So we can also see the real output of the Hall effect switch. And here I use a magnet that have already been marked as south and north pole and we can see what makes the difference if we use one pole or the other because the Hall effect switch is only unipolar. And we see if we use the south pole, the Hall effect switch switch the LED on. And if we take the magnet away, it switches also off. But if we use the north pole, there's no difference. We can put the north pole to the Hall effect switch, but it don't switch the LED on. And now back to the south pole and the Hall effect switch switches as expected the LED on and off if we approach with our magnet. And on the ESP32 there runs a firmware with an interrupt. So each time the Hall effect switch switch the position, the alarm goes on and we can see the alarm sign on the display. And to disalarm the ESP32 we have to press the reset switch. And we can use the firmware in two modes. If we approach with a magnetic field, then the alarm goes on. Or if we have the magnetic field attached while we are in standby mode, then if we remove the magnetic field, then the alarm goes on. 
And we can also test this with a smaller magnet. Here I have a bunch of very small magnets, but they are very strong. They are neodymium type magnets. And we can also see that the whole effect switch switches on if we use the correct south pole, if we approach to the sensor or if we leave the sensor. And if we change the side to the north pole, again, there's no Hall effect switching because the used Schmidt trigger don't get the right level to trigger our Hall effect switch. Now let's have a brief look in our source code. In the main task, there only is a task created with an OLED display and the Hall effect sensor. So let's have a look in the task. We start by setting up the UHG library functions and we set the I2C pins. Then we create an event group. And if you want to know what's an event group, please watch my previous video about event groups. It's just a bit of groups and we can set it even in an interrupt. So let's continue with the initializing of our GPIO pins and the GPIO pins will trigger by a falling edge because the all effect sensors triggers an internal transistor or MOSFET and switch the output to ground if the trigger events happens. So we try to get this negative edge or falling edge of our signal. And we set the GPIO pin and we can have a look. That's only uh, defined for GPIO pin 13. And surely our GPIO pin is used as an input. And we also define a pull up resistor and no pull down. And then we configure our GPIO pin. And the next thing we also introduce in GPIO interrupt routine. And if the interrupts happen, then this interrupt handler is called. So let's have a look at the interrupt handler routine and this checked if our GPIO pin is the trigger of the interrupt. And then it sets the bit for our Hall effect sensor in the event group. And that's all. And if we look down, we also initialized our display and then then we go to an endless loop and the endless loop check if the event group bit is set and then print out the alarm. If the event group is not triggered, then it's display standby. And if it's triggered, then the display display alarm. It's just simple. And that's it. I hope you find this useful and enjoy the video and learn something. If so, please give me a thumbs up and support my work for my videos. Write some comments and I hope you have a nice day and bye bye.